thought so. I thought so. That's gotta be Cheryl. They're a legendary Pokemon and then Uber. Is this not a Tears reference? Doomy wasn't able to see me either. It was weird. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm guessing it was where the, the flashlight was. Yeah. Sonic R is the best game of all time. Everybody should play this game. Uh, especially uh, Nerdy Husky TTV, if you're out there, you should play this game, you should play this game. But I don't have a Sega now, Saturn. you probably may be wondering, like, but, but this game isn't on Steam, I can't play it anywhere. And I'm like, no, 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 look, Gems Collection, Sonic Gems Collection. So, Nerdy Sonic Husky Gem. TTV, if you're out there... Wait a minute. I know you have a GameCube. I do have a GameCube. You should play Sonic And I have R's Sonic Gems Collection. In Gems Collection. Sonic R is that terrible racing game that people love to shit on, right? There's no way it's that bad. There's no way a Sonic game around Sonic's Prime can be that bad, can it? Let's check it out. Let's check it out. It's definitely not as bad as they said it was. It's worse. I'm going to bed. <sighs> Let's make one thing perfectly clear. The best game ever made, Sonic R is not. Not even close. Not playing Sonic R. No, stop. Oh. Damn it. Uh. Oh. What the? F I really don't know what I could possibly say about Sonic R that hasn't been said already. It's a subpar near shit game that came out on November 18th, 1997 for the Sega Saturn. And I would show you the Sega Saturn version, but I'm far too poor to own it, much less show it to you, with prices sitting comfortably around the $300 mark. No thanks. Thankfully, a version of the game did hit the GameCube on August 11th, 2005 as a part of the Sega Gems collection. I played this game earlier. Sonic R is anything but a gem. And to my understanding, this version of the game corrects a lot of the problems that were present in the Saturn version. <sighs> well, Hard Pretzel on Twitch really wants me to play this game, so I am going to give it one more go. But once we're done here, I'm snapping the fucking disc in two. Uh, well, here we go again. Sonic R is a racing game that will have you racing to turn the console off. Where do I begin? 
and I guess let's talk about one of the most important aspects of racing games, the controls. Sonic R's controls feel floaty, and what I mean by that is that it feels like they're way wider than any turn on the course could possibly be. I mean, look at this. I can't even stay on the track. I'm just trying to go over the bridge and... Oh, come on! I mean, this is a joke, right? As far as other buttons are concerned, we have a button for acceleration, a button to jump, a button to change the camera's distance, and another button for acceleration? There's no way to slow down or brake in this game? Okay, well, let's try a different level. Maybe this one just is super narrow. I guess let's try, uh, Regal Ruin. Ugh, nope, that's no good either. Alright, I'm gonna lap back around. I should be able to just jump over those walls. They were super short, should be no problem. Oh, come on! Who on earth thought this was a good idea? They couldn't have possibly made the controls this bad on purpose. Use the triggers. Okay. The triggers. Okay, well, that went way better. I'm gonna go back to that first level and try racing with the triggers this time. Oh, uh, it's a thunderstorm now. This game has weather effects? Well, anyway, here we go. First race, using the triggers. Oh. My. God. This is actually going pretty well. Well, mostly well. You know what? This is actually pretty fun. You know, now that I have control of my character. And look at this. I'm just jumping all over the place as I make my way around the track. How cool is that? Wait, did I just skip the loop? And it counted my lap even though I wasn't immediately on the track? Yeah, that's kind of cool, actually. Makes hopping around the track a lot less stressful. Wow. Okay. I honestly can't believe I came in first place. You know, honestly, knowing about the triggers just changed my whole opinion about the controls of the game. It's not perfect, but it's way better now. It's almost like the triggers are there to help you lean into your turns as you go around the track. Okay, so we just finished Resort Island. We still have to go through Radical City, Regal Ruin, and Reactive Factory. Do they all start with R? How am I just now noticing this? Getting first place on the first four tracks will give you access to the Radiant Emerald, which is this game's take on Mario Kart's Rainbow Road. Okay, now joking aside, this is a flashing colors warning. I mean, seriously, if flashing, strobing RGB lights really upsets you in a visually stimulating way, now's a good time to look away for a little bit. I'm not kidding. This track puts modern-day RGB gaming computers to shame. Oh my god, you guys thought I was kidding. This is rainbow vomit if I've ever seen it. After you get first on the Radiant Emerald, congratulations! You've just beaten Sonic R. The credits roll, and we get one more song to jam out to. But that can't seriously be the end of the game, right? I mean, that was way too short. Free roam exploration. You just hearing that? Okay then. Back to Resort Island we go. Alright, let's run off the track here. Well, okay, it's true. There's a lot more to this game than simply racing. There's a number of collectibles that you can hunt down to unlock new characters. Each of the main four tracks have five Sonic Coins and two Chaos Emeralds for you to hunt down, the first track only having one Emerald. So, 20 Sonic Coins and 7 Chaos Emeralds for you to hunt. Your routing while running around to find these items will end up changing drastically. Collecting all 5 coins in a track and getting at least 3rd place will put you into a race with that track's unlockable character in a one-on-one -on -one race. Win the race- OH SHIT! Uh, uh, hang on, hang on. Just gotta get on the land and there we go. <coughs> so, as I was saying, win the race and you unlock the character. Sometimes the coins are a little challenging to find. You'll find yourself attempting the same track over and over again just to find them all. Sometimes you might find yourself so stumped you decide to check in weird areas, like in Radical City here. I was having a hell of a time trying to find this last coin, so I turned around and went backwards into this area, and wouldn't you know it, there was the coin. Oh, it was right. <laughs> it was right there. It was just there, and that, you know, it was just... What else are you fucking hiding from me?! The emeralds are a little more challenging. They all need you to spend at least 20, sometimes 50 rings on certain gates in order to even reach them. 
But simply collecting them isn't enough. After you get an emerald, you still need to get into first place. So if you get an emerald but don't come in first place, you don't get to keep the emerald. <laughs> Just make sure that when you're trying to go through the gates, you actually have enough rings, because nothing feels nearly as bad as running face first into a gate when you're two rings short. Getting all seven emeralds will unlock one final character, Supersonic. Now you can hop onto the Radiant Emerald, race as Supersonic, and enjoy the Supersonic racing song as you take your victory laps. And your reward for collecting everything? This little image of Sonic and company posing in front of the Chaos Emeralds, followed by one more credit sequence. And that's it. Yep, we just beat Sonic R 100%. It may still be a short game by most standards. I mean, realistically, I've only been recording game footage for about two hours now, and speedrunners can do 100% of this game in about 15 minutes. So if we can complete the game this quickly, is it really worth the $300 price tag for the Saturn version? Is it even worth the sometimes $100 tag that the gems collection can go for? Now, in talking about replayability, Okay, well, anyway. Variety of characters. Okay, what the hell? What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> like I was saying, in terms of replayability, there are indeed a variety of characters that do race very differently from one another, giving the game a bit of variety as you race your way through Sonic R's five tracks. The character traits include Sonic's double jump, Tails is like a little helicopter, Knuckles can glide through the stages, Amy can- OH SHIT! Amy, look out a wall! <clears throat> well, she can't jump. Because cars don't jump. Trust me, I've tried. It's so easy, just jump. With the knees. Jump. But she does get an occasional boost, and her car does turn into a watercraft. Dr. Robotnik, uh... Has nothing. Well, actually, that's not true. Again, he can't jump, but he can glide over water. And also, at 10 rings, they give you a Tomahawk cruise missile that you can use to blast away anyone in front of you. It's a little underwhelming to me. As far as the unlockable characters are concerned, Metal Sonic feels a little faster than Fleshy Sonic. He can jump super high and can hover over water. The Tails doll sucks ass. Metal Knuckles hovers over the water, but glides like a jet plane. And Robo Eggman has a Glock 17. Okay, joking aside, the gun doesn't appear to actually do anything, but like Fleshy Robotnik, he gets a Fat Man at 10 rings, and he can also hover over the water. Oh, oh, uh, never mind, no he can't. And lastly, Super Sonic. He starts out at top speed and goes real fast, even faster than Sonic Kid. You know Sonic Kid, right? This kid? You couldn't even comprehend how fast I am. Supersonic also has an insane double jump. Again, like in Mario Kart, there are these little item emblems that give you either a number of rings or a little power-up to help you out during your race. But unlike Mario Kart, you don't get any offensive items, but in a game like Sonic R, offensive items would be mostly pointless anyway, so I'm kind of glad they're not here. Some of the power-ups include speed boots, a bubble shield, and a magnet shield, which is one of my favorites because when you get them, the rings swarm around you like bees! Ah! <laughs> what? I don't think that was obnoxious. Anyway. Adding to the replayability, there are a variety of weather effects. There are several effects that range from a clear sunset to a thunderstorm and even a wintry chill. <laughs> okay, I'm going inside. The wintry chill turns all the water into ice, so you get to deal with ice physics. Yep, ice physics in a racing game. But believe it or not, the ice physics can be used to your advantage by opening up new pathing possibilities and are even used heavily in the speedrunning community. The routing really does matter in this game. It can open up new possibilities for shortcuts. For example, in Reactive Factory, maybe I don't want to take this giant loop. Maybe I just want to jump off the ramp and fall down this way. Or maybe in Resort Island, instead of running over the bridges, I can just glide over the rivers and use these little islands as midways to my destination. The game does a really interesting job at not restricting my ability to play it. Is it perfect? No. The controls, while better now that I know the trick, are still a mild dark mark against the game. I mean, sure, I would have figured it out eventually, but not knowing the trick straight out of the gate is pretty frustrating. The level design is okay, it can be a little chaotic in some spots, and sometimes the enemy AI can just have too much of an advantage over you with how rubber banding works in games like this during this time period. But even still, I had fun. 
I had fun? Wait. This whole time I thought I was just gonna be shitting on Sonic R like everyone else did. But I legitimately had fun playing this video game. All I had to do was give Sonic R a chance. It kind of makes me wonder what other games I missed out on due to my hasty opinions. So in conclusion- so, JESUS CHRIST! What, what'd you think? Yeah, that was... That was good. That was a good game. That was a good game. Yes, even with some of my revelations, I can still see how some may not enjoy a game like this. Some might even say that needing to be forced to understand the game's nuances to enjoy it makes the whole experience lackluster. But still. Misunderstood, and definitely an experience that needs an honest attempt. Sonic R was really good. It really surprised me, honestly. I'm glad I gave it another attempt, and I'm not too proud to admit that I was wrong about it. And I have you to thank for... Where'd he go? Play Sonic R! <laughs> Play Sonic R!